Hey there, my name's Ken Webster. I've worked in the circular economy arena for around a, a dozen years now, and I was very happy to be invited to say a few words about Design Week and the potential for the circular economy. I'm going to dive in quite deep for just one slide, because I think we need to know the context before we settle down into particulars. And this first context is almost like a circular economy in just one diagram because it shows where we are now with a linear economy that is famously take, make, use and dispose. And it's powered by cheap energy and cheap credit in search of uh, economic growth based upon throughput, really. It degenerates natural and social capital. And in a way, it's, its lifetime is limited. You, you, it's quite impossible to continue that. So what's the alternative? Well, designers like uh, Braungarter McDonough uh, quite some time ago wrote Cradle to Cradle. There's been work on industrial ecology, of course. There's been work on what Gunter Pauli called the blue economy, trying to use insights from living systems to look again at how the economy might work. And the second part of that uh, slide is really a distillation of at least a couple of elements of what a circular economy in a big picture way looks like. It works from renewables very largely and energy efficiency. It works in two cycles because Brown and McDonough always saw material flows almost like nutrients. They had to feed the system. So they continually asked what's next for this product component or material. We really don't know what a money system would look like in a fully circular economy and we don't know the nature of economic growth in that system it's likely to be qualitatively different. So that's the big picture, except to say that the circular economy is about rebuilding and uh, enhancing natural and social capital. So it's capital orientated rather than degenerating capital. So it's very much a positive idea and a positive outcome. In the next slide, we can see how things are really done at the moment, by and large. In this slide, it's a sort of waste to waste economy. The design of the product isn't changed, but there is some effort to recover materials or components or to perhaps extend the life of the product somewhat. But it's really a detour to the dump, uh, to pick up another phrase that uh, Bill Madonna is often seen to use. It's a detour to the dump. That isn't redesigning products and components and materials for a circular economy. The next slide looks at in more detail at what is, is usually described as the butterfly diagram. This takes those two cycles of materials which can be um, reordered through the living systems on the left and those which require human input to reorder and to uh, maintain capital quality to maintain value. And the bigger the line on the right hand side is the uh, the, the greater the potential for uh, increased revenue, uh, increased um, value of that product uh, described through the process in which it's engaged. And of course, you can see that recycling is really a loop of last resort. And that's something very pertinent, I think, for this week. Moving on just very quickly, uh, there's no real problem around carbon dioxide uh, emissions in a circular economy because as a mat valuable material they will be integrated back into the soils and into natural capital that's the idea and uh, it shouldn't be seen as a sort of approach to minimizing uh, co2 rather it's about making sure it works in an appropriate cycle uh, we want to move towards renewables in any case, and a circular economy should reduce emissions. But it's not just an environmental response, it's a business response, which, uh, which also does those very positive environmental things. So just a reminder, uh, Dries and Sumner, whose slides I've been using thus far, uh, very much see that the next industrial revolution, or the one that we're in, is a circular economy one, because it's about a nutrient economy. We've been through the other four uh, elements of industrial 
and development, and now it's time to design for the whole loop. And part of that design will be knowing what materials we've got. A huge part of the design is in designing uh, materials data management about who's got what, where it is, and who's got the obligations to do exactly what with it. We can't do that without a very large input of effort from digital designers. Here is a slide that illustrates uh, Circularize. They are a, a Dutch startup making rapid progress on finding something useful to do with the blockchain. And uh, it's all about enabling a chain of responsibility around materials, uh, which involves sharing information without uh, ruining the, the business's right to some proprietary uh, knowledge. And how far this circular economy revolution is reaching is how far the design revolution is reaching, really. We have to imagine buildings, we have to imagine materials very differently. And there are just two examples here. We're able to build high-rise uh, according to cradle-to-cradle -cradle criteria, a, a set of criteria that make sure that all the materials involved in the building fit the cycles as described. And secondly, let's get away uh, from the use of plastics in some area. Let's really focus on new materials that will do the job and yet fit in the, uh, the bio cycle. So developing packaging, which is based on um, agricultural waste, um, building boards made from using agricultural waste and mycelium. These are all ideas which are current. And so I wish you the best for the week and let's keep design to the fore and let's keep the focus on how what is designed fits the system and how we might have to redesign the system. Thank you very much.